What's going on, everybody? It has been a minute. Apologies, but also there hasn't really been a ton of movies to talk about, but I did want to make a video, get back on the interwebs a little bit, and I figured since the summer is now coming to a close, unfortunately, it is time to reflect and talk about the best movies of summer 2022, because that is what people do, at least people like me. That's what we do. So I've compiled my list of my top 10 favorite movies of the summer. Obviously, there were some movies I didn't get a chance to see, but this is my list of my best that I did get a chance to see. So obviously, this is very subjective. I'm definitely curious to hear what your favorite movies of the summer were. So definitely let me know in the comment section below. So without further ado, let's jump into my favorite movies of summer 2022. Clocking in at number 10, we have a movie that recently just came out that I had a lot of fun with despite its problems, and that is Bullet Train. You know, the movie from director David Leach, which stars Brad Pitt, Brian Tyree Henry, Alan Taylor Johnson, Joey King, just a whole bunch of people in this colorful smoke and aces on a train kind of film. And I had a blast with it. I think this is Brad Pitt, you know, channeling his star power and charisma, dialing it up to 11, maybe even 12. And everyone in this cast is really fantastic, especially Brian Tyree Henry and Aaron Taylor Johnson, who almost walk away with the movie. But there's so much fun to be had here. David Leach is directing these action sequences with that flair that he, you know, that we've all come to know when love and expect uh, and every action sequence feels different from the other it feels really well staged and choreographed and it was just a blast and even though this movie is a little bit too much in terms of backstory giving every little person and even thing a backstory it's still a blast and I had a huge smile on my face watching it the entire time and it was definitely one of the most fun times I had at a movie theater this summer and number nine we have a movie that kind of took me by surprise when it hit Netflix a movie that I didn't really have on my radar at all and that was the basketball movie Hustle starring Adam C. Sandler. This one was a real treat. Like I said, came out of nowhere and really surprised the hell out of me. It's always a great treat to see Adam Sandler take on a dramatic role. I mean, he absolutely crushed it in Uncut Gems, and I was really happy he was taking on this more dramatic role in Hustle, and I know that he's a huge basketball fan himself, so this definitely felt like a passion project for him, and I really, really loved his performance here. It's tender, it's warm, it's passionate. You could tell he really had an affinity for the story and, you know, for this sport, and I loved the chemistry he had with the young basketball player that he's trying to train and, you know, get drafted eventually. Um, and it's just a really fun, heartwarming story that if you like basketball or if you just like sports, I think you'll be really into it. And even I'm not, I don't really consider myself someone who's like super into sports, but I ended up having a really good time with this movie. I was really connected to the characters. I was really invested in this story. And Adam Sandler always makes for a really likable protagonist. And it's a movie that breezes by and really has a great, like I said, affinity for the sport. It taps into that and it definitely doesn't shy away from some of the darker aspects as well. Definitely another winning performance from Adam Sandler and a really fun, pleasant surprise from Netflix. At number eight, we have a movie that certainly divided critics and audiences, but for me, I had so much fun and had such a great time watching it, and that was Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I, you know, for, for years, I feel like I've seen Twitter and just the internet in general talk about how every Marvel movie or most of them feel like they kind of come from an assembly belt and that, you know, they all feel the same. So when I heard that Sam Raimi was going to be taking on a Doctor Strange movie, I was thinking to myself, oh, yeah, that's what we need. We need, we need to inject some creativity and some pizzazz into the proceedings. And he definitely did not disappoint. This feels like a Sam Raimi movie while also still feeling like a Marvel film. But this really taps into the director's potential. It really has his flavor, really has his style. It's really dark and gothic and horror-esque, and I really felt like that worked for the Doctor Strange character and this particular story, and I just loved the action sequences that go to some dark places, especially I think this has one of the best third acts out of any Marvel movie um, ever, and I had a huge smile on my face from beginning to end, and I remember leaving the theater saying, oh, people are going to love this movie. I can't, you know, uh, think about anyone possibly disliking it. Checks Twitter everyone almost hates the movie and then I'm thinking to myself oh my god am I really in the minority here but hey I guess this movie isn't for everybody but for me as a big Sam Raimi fan as a big Doctor Strange fan I got everything I could have possibly wanted and I thought this was leagues better than that first film and I think this is a, one of the best Marvel movies in a while. At number seven we have a movie that I went in with pretty low expectations honestly just given the director because I'm not a huge Baz Luhrmann fan I'm really not or Baz Luhrmann is it Baz Baz? Food for thought. I wasn't really looking forward to this movie just because I'm just not a huge fan of his directorial style. It's usually too over the top. It's a little bit too in your face, overly edited. It can be a little bit nauseating sometimes. I think I've only really liked maybe one or two movies of his if I'm, you know, looking back, but I was blown away by Elvis and that's due in large part to uh, Austin Butler who completely owns the role 
of, of Elvis Presley. You can tell that he had an affinity for the man, that he wanted to do him justice. Not only does he look like Elvis, but, you know, he got to sound like Elvis, especially for those songs that take place in the earlier part of his career. I mean, Butler just owns this role. It's one of the best musical biopic performances ever. He just transforms into the man, and I was so impressed with his performance. Unbelievably good. Tom Hanks, on the other hand, we're just not going to talk about him here. This is the best of 2022. <laughs> I don't think his performance would fall into that category. So he makes a choice and he leans into it. And that's all I'll say about that. Or in the words of Forrest Gump, that's all I got to say about that. But I do feel like Lerman's directorial style works for this material because it's, you know, Elvis was glitzy. He was over stylized. He was kind of over the top in the best way possible. And I felt like Baz Lerman was like the perfect choice to direct this movie. And I think he does a great job. The musical sequences have that energy and flair you're looking for. The movie moves along at a pretty brisk pace, even though it's almost three hours long. It, you know, it only feels like that in maybe the last 15, 20 minutes where it definitely could have been trimmed down a little bit. But this is a movie that does the musical icon justice. The music, of course, is great and the direction and the performances all around are super solid and I really had an, a surprisingly great time with Elvis and I highly recommend it if you were a fan of the man and particularly his music. At number six, we've got another streaming movie, a, a movie that, you know, was getting a lot of buzz before dropping on Apple TV, a movie that, you know, it's from a writer director who I didn't really love his first film. So I was still going into this movie with, you know, slightly low expectations, but I was thoroughly entertained by Cha Cha Real Smooth. But man, this guy needs to work on the titles of his movies. <laughs> we've got Shit House and we've got Cha Cha Real Smooth. We need better titles, my man. But this is a really heartwarming tale of this, you know, uh, young guy in his 20s, really charismatic guy who's kind of aimless. He doesn't really know what he wants to do with his life. And he's, you know, develops this relationship with this really warm, tender mother played by Dakota Johnson um, and her uh, autistic daughter. And then, you know, they have this great little three-way relationship where, you know, they get to know one another. They, you know, uh, get really connected and invested in one another. It's a really sweet, heartwarming story. And then, of course, you know, our main character falls for Dakota Johnson because let's face it, who wouldn't fall? for Dakota Johnson. And the movie is absolutely hilarious. It also knows how to be tender. It also knows how to be really sweet and dramatic when it needs to be. This is just the definition of, of, a, of a feel good movie that's really done well. And I feel like Cooper Rafe really honed in on what worked in his debut feature and how to kind of eliminate some of the things that didn't quite work in that first feature, because I feel like there's a much better put together movie. It's a much, much better, you know, written film. And Rafe is really strong in the lead where I found him to be pretty unlikable uh, in his first film, but I thought he was really charismatic, really charming here. And he had great chemistry with Dakota Johnson. And uh, everyone in this cast really shines. Leslie Mann is fantastic in this movie. And just the movie itself will just leave a huge smile on your face, might even make you tear up and make me tear up. And I think it's absolutely one of the best movies of the year that I feel like nobody has seen. At number five, we have a movie I just recently saw, which recently debuted in theaters, but you know, kind of just did nothing. <laughs> I feel like it just kind of dropped, got a lot of good reviews, and now it's on digital. And it's a shame because it's actually a really good movie. And that is Vengeance from writer-director BJ Novak. This is his directorial debut. And he plays kind of this young, narcissistic, you know, uh, writer who, you know, he, he pretty much just cares about himself. And one day he gets a call about this girl he used to hook up with and that she died and he gets gets guilted into going to her funeral and then he needs an idea for a podcast so he decides to make a podcast out of her story because it seems like she may have been murdered and then <laughs> hijinks ensue. Now I didn't really know what to make of this story. I mean the trailer looked like it could be charming but what I got was a really interesting funny you know really well written film and a great directorial debut from BJ Novak who he's definitely proven that he's a great writer you know he's you know written some uh, some of the best episodes of The Office uh, and he's written a few books as well but I really think he is a talent to watch now behind the camera as well but this is a great looking movie this is a really well written movie there is some great humor in here there's some amazing performances BJ Novak's great Boyd Holbrook basically steals the movie he's fantastic but for me I think the standout here is Ashton Kutcher who plays this you know nefarious but super charming you know, villain type in the movie where, you know, you watch the trailer, you're like, oh, this guy must have done it. But yet when you meet this guy, he's just so enigmatic and he's so magnetic that you like, you completely understand why any person would kind of fall into his web if he is a villain. And Kutcher just nails the role. And I thought this is one of his best performances ever. And it's a really understated, really well done performance. This is a really great movie that I think way more people should see. And I think BJ Novak, I can't wait to see what he does behind the camera next and what he writes next because the guy really is a true talent. At number four, we have another pleasant surprise. I mean, I feel like this was a summer of a lot of pleasant surprise movies where One In With Low Expectations came out having had a great time with it and Prey 
certainly falls into that category. What a freaking return to form for the Predator franchise, people. This comes from director Dan Trachtenberg, who previously did 10 Cloverfield Lane, which is such a good claustrophobic thriller. And he really takes this Predator franchise back to basics. You know, this takes place hundreds of years before the events of the first Predator film. You know, we're focusing on this Comanche tribe and the Predator's kind of hunting them down one by one, doing its Predator thing. And we follow this young Comanche girl played by uh, Amber Midthunder. And can we just for a second just talk about how fucking great that name is? Amber Midthunder. Damn, it's like born to be a star kind of name. <laughs> and she's phenomenal in the movie. She's magnetic. She's powerful. She's got a great presence. You know, she makes for a really likable heroine. And her scenes where she goes toe to toe with this predator are real highlights. And she's just a really badass heroine in her own right. And the action sequences in this film, oh my, so well done. Trachtenberg really directs these with a the plum. They're beautiful wide angle shots where we really get to appreciate the choreography and we get some really great camera work as well. Some great like one shots, really elongated takes where we get to really appreciate the action. It's not cut to pieces. It's just beautiful stuff. And as a huge action movie fan, when I get to see you know, these action sequences take place over these nice long extended takes where we really get to appreciate what's going on and all the stunt work that went into it and all the creativity that went into it. We're doing something right. And Trachtenberg knew what to do with the Predator and how to make him feel imposing and menacing and frankly terrifying again. This is a great looking movie. It's a great sounding movie. It's badass. It gives you all that gore and blood that you want as a Predator fan. And it also delivers a really thrilling, tightly made story. It clocks in in an hour and a half, so it never overstays its welcome. And it's just a damn good movie. And for the first time in years, makes me excited for the possibility of another Predator movie. So that's definitely saying something. At number three, we have the horror hit of the summer. That's for sure. And that is Scott Derrickson's The Black Phone starring Ethan Hawke. I was so excited for this movie. I was beyond excited because I love Scott Derrickson as a horror director. Sinister is just one of my favorite horror films ever. I think the guy's such a talented director. I thought he did a wonderful job with the first Doctor Strange film, but his talents definitely lie in horror. And he takes this relatively simple tale in The Black Phone and he turns it into something otherworldly and something really uh, exhilarating and entertaining with an incredible central performance from Ethan Hawke, who is terrifying in this movie. It's great to see him take on some villain roles this year. He's been eating up scenery and I've been all about it. This is a story of this town where there's this guy going around called the Grabber who takes young children, traps them in his basement and just eventually ends up killing them and all these kids go missing. And this young boy becomes one of those victims. But there's this black phone in the basement that keeps ringing even though it's disconnected, but when he picks it up, it's the disembodied voices of all the victims that have come before him that are trying to help him escape from Ethan Hawke's clutches. Yeah, it's a great freaking story. That was uh, written by Joe Hill, Stephen King's son. So yeah, we've got some solid material to work with, and Derrickson just adds to it. He expands upon it. He makes it visually arresting and makes it super entertaining. This is a movie where every minute counts, where it just feels like no minute is wasted. There's some amazing character work, especially having to do with this young boy and his sister and also his father. Um, I, I just think everything here works. It clicks. This is not a movie that's, you know, jump scare kind of scary. There are a couple bits that might get a few people, but I think this is more of just a creepy claustrophobic thriller and Derrickson really shines in that territory. And this movie is absolutely no exception. Like I said, Ethan Hawke, is incredible in the movie and it's just you sometimes you just forget how good of an actor he is especially when he takes on a role that he hasn't necessarily taken on before so to see his you know darker side here and see that explored here was really fascinating and he just made for a really unpredictable terrifying kind of charming villain and i loved every bit of him in this movie derrickson just knows how to deliver the horror goods and you know he delivered one of the best movies of the summer full stop at number two we had the third film from director jordan peele which is Nope, which took him into sci-fi territory. And I was really excited for this one. It's gotten a little bit of mixed reviews. There's some people like me who really feel passionate about it and think it's fantastic and other people who felt a little bit underwhelmed by it. But I loved what he did with this movie. It basically feels like an alien movie that is like a Jaws film. And it's so beautifully made. It's a gorgeous looking movie. The story has a lot to say about how we monetize tragedy or use it to our own benefit. And it's a great social commentary about that. But it's also just a really entertaining summer blockbuster film with some amazing performances from Daniel Kaluuya, Kiki Palmer, Steven Yoon. I mean, everyone, Brandon Perea, he's a great standout. I want to see him in more things. And Jordan Peele really knows how to make a solid horror thriller. And he's definitely tapping into some more sci-fi elements here, some more thriller elements here. He really knows how to stay age and action sequence and he really knows how to build suspense there are some sequences that are so beautifully done that it's just pure sound there's no music it's just tension suspense 
great sound design. This movie has one of the best sound designs of the year for sure and one of the best alien designs for sure. And this movie goes to some really interesting places. And when the big reveal happens of what exactly is going on, it really doesn't disappoint and it feels refreshing. And I had a blast with Nope and I can't wait to watch it again and show other people. It's just such a good time at the movies. And it's what summer movies are made of. And Jordan Peele knew that. I just cannot wait to see what this guy does next. In my mind, he's three for three. And at number one, this should come as no surprise to anyone ever, Top Gun Maverick. This movie is a miracle. <laughs> it really is. It's just a miracle. It's a movie that I don't think I've heard about a single person not liking it. I seriously, I've talked to so many people who have seen this movie. Not a single person was like, eh, it was okay. Every single person has been head over heels in love with this movie. And that's probably why it's doing so incredibly well at the box office, which I'm so happy about. But not only have we finally gotten a Top Gun sequel that has been talked about for years and years and years, and not only have we finally gotten it after so many delays due to COVID, but it's so good. It's somehow even better than the original film. It takes what worked in that original film. It makes it even better. It adds new layers, new emotional layers. This is an emotionally thrilling, visually spectacular action film and easily one of the best sequels ever made. And I know that may sound like a grandiose statement, but it really is. It's just, it really takes advantage of the new technology we have to deliver some of the most exhilarating aerial action sequences ever. I really just don't see another movie topping them, frankly. But what really made me love this movie was just the amazing character work. I mean, the relationship between Maverick and Goose's son, Rooster, is incredible, and it never felt cliche. It felt completely lived in, and it was really well explored. And feeling the fallout of Goose's death from that original film and how it still kind of permeates this film and still haunts Maverick, I really loved them exploring that and cruising you know, delivered some really great scenes in this film where you, you know, you're reminded that Tom Cruise is not just a great action star. He's a great actor. And I feel like a lot of people forget that. And everyone in this cast is just fantastic, you know, top to bottom. I mean, Glenn Powell is really fantastic. Jennifer Connelly pops up. She's great. Um, but Tom Cruise really just owns this movie. There's a reason why people love Maverick so much and love Tom Cruise so much. And he just puts his star power on full display and I was just exhilarated from beginning to end and by the end of the movie I was absolutely in tears I, I it was just it was so emotionally satisfying and the fact that I got to say that about a Top Gun sequel and not only say that but say that it was even better than the original film just wow just kudos to Tom Cruise to director Joseph Kaczynski who's easily one of the most underrated directors working today I never thought a Top Gun sequel could work or work this well and as a fan I am just so unbelievably happy I've seen it so many times now and I probably will watch it countless more times. It's just one of the best sequels ever made and easily one of my favorite Tom Cruise movies. Just job well done. It owned the summer by far and away. No movie even came close for me. Top Gun Maverick is the movie of summer 2022. So that is my list of my top 10 favorite movies of summer 2022. I don't know why 2022 is kind of so hard to say on camera. I, I've messed that up so many times. You haven't seen it but I've felt it. I was there for it. <laughs> but let me know what your favorite movies of the summer were in the comment section below. Definitely want to hear your thoughts and maybe even just throw in like, what well, like what were your least favorite? Like what, was, what were the movies that were just like, oh my God, this was a stinker. Get it out of my face. It's terrible. Don't ever watch it, Tom. Let me know about those in the comment section below as well. And until next time, everybody, I'm Tom Chattelbash, YouTube's most reliable movie critic.